Welcome to Serial Bookworms, where we are reading through Mother of Learning a few chapters at a time and talking about them every other week. Feel free to participate, speculate, and ask questions. I ask that you please keep the topic to the current knowledge and chapters if you have read ahead in the story. Where we last left off, Zorian made contact with a group of telekinetic spiders called Aranea, who live in the dungeon beneath Sioria. Their matriarch, Spear of Resolve, offered to assist Zorian and gave him a packet of her memories to carry between time loops. He hasn't returned to her yet, deciding to learn more about the Aranea and how to protect himself mentally first, as the packet will last at least a year before decaying. However, Zack seems to have decided to spend some time at the school and has been focusing on Zorian, preventing him from doing anything majorly divergent, lest he tip his hand that he is in the time loop with Zack. So far, Zorian has time looped about 23 months, almost two years. We open the chapter with Zorian musing about basically the butterfly effect. Small, seemingly insignificant changes having an outsized effect on loops. Paradoxically, big sweeping actions that seem like they should send everything careening are just a drop in the ocean. All of this is coming to him after failing to get permission from Ilsa to venture into the dungeon sewer as he wasn't vouchsafed by Kale, a person whose judgment Ilsa likely gave more weight to due to being a single parent and a genius uh, medical uh, uh, researcher. Thankfully, Zorian had a backup plan. Good old Tyven and that watch quest. Uh, they bumble through the sewer until Zorian manages to find a wandering Aranea to get in contact with the matriarch. Unfortunately, he neglected to really explain the situation to Tyven, who nearly causes a diplomatic incident when the spider steps into view. We learn a bit of Aranean society, namely all of them are female, as the males are essentially subsentient certainly an extreme form of sexual dimorphism. Zorian allows the matriarch to view the packet her past self has stored in his mind. She seems a bit disturbed by what she learns and asks him to return in a few days. Hopefully, Zorian gets a bunch of unofficial entrances to the sewer, so he can avoid this whole escort permission from authority figures issue in the future. Tyven is not happy with all of the events that just transpired and drags Zorian into a nearby tavern to grill him about what the heck just happened. And their discussion soon devolves into Tyven lecturing him on combat and eventually convincing is a strong word, more like bullying him to accept some training from her in combat magic. And to prove her skills as a teacher, of course, a friendly spar is in order. And that's how Ty er, <clears throat> And that's how Zorian finds himself at Tyven's family training hall, looking at the end of a rod of magic missiles he had made, trying to figure out the most diplomatic way of approaching the duel. Though the spell rod is actually simple misdirection as he knew he has no chance of overwhelming Tyven's defenses with just a, midget, just a magic missile swarm. He actually is concealing a shielding bracelet that he also made, which he hopes will surprise her as far as an opening maneuver. At the start of the fight, Zorian finds five magic missiles barreling towards him from Tyven's spell staff, and we are treated to a demonstration of Zorian's combat practice, or rather, his defensive ability, as the shield he brings up is nearly flawless, almost completely transparent force walls. Admits this, he had thrown a vial towards Tyven. Using a burst of mana, he releases its contents. A simple alchemical concoction, whose liquid converts into a billowing, choking gas once it reaches the air. Tyven is dazed and stumbles out of the cloud, so Zorian tries to go for a finishing blow. 
Unfortunately, Tyvin seems to immediately turn and pinpoint where he is, uh, and being a far more experienced combat mage, uh, second generation specialist, as both her parents are combat mages, uh, Zorian gets a battering ram of force to his torso for his troubles, and even a successful saving throw to take half damage, uh, clipping him, sends him ragdolling across the field, and likely would have given him a concussion had the protective enchantments not arrested his fall a little bit softly. We get a bit of banter um, between them, but Zorian wonders how she was able to see him despite the gas filling up her vision. Ivan shrugs it off with a simple but wasteful mana ability. You just kind of expel the mana in a cloud and then you kind of use that cloud to sense an area around you. Zorian's mind begins to turn on this. It's almost like if someone were throwing like a, I don't know, mana charged marble at your head, you could perhaps use this technique to see if it's coming. Kind of like the thing that Zim, Zim, uh, his mentor Zim's uh, current task for him, or as it, or <clears throat> kind of like, uh, Zorian's mentor Zvim's current training with him. I imagine at this point, Zvim somewhere suddenly sneezes and doesn't know why. Though, despite Zorian finally being able to make progress with his mentor, the difficulty is ramped up as is usual for a Zvim teaching method, and he now not has to just dodge multiple mana charged marbles, he has to call out them in order of mana density. So it looks like Zorian is still going to need some practice in mastering this new skill in his repertoire. It seems Zack, all this while, has been trying to get people together to host some kind of mother of all parties. Seems kind of silly, but Zorian has something far more serious to deal with talking to giant telepathic spiders about time travel and an invasion. Of which, we get some very interesting new news. It seems the Aranea have actually been fighting the invasion people in the dungeon for a few months until a about a week ago, around the beginning of the time loop, where they suddenly seem to obtain a disturbing amount of precognition. Uh, to the extent of knowing hidden and unique skills to individual Aranea and the reactions the whole web would take to certain events happening. Some even skills that have never been displayed or used, held in reserve for truly emergency situations. We also learn that divinations are second only to mind magic as far as Aranean magic repertoire. And they have tried to forecast the future which was incredibly more chaotic and unreliable than it usually is, except the date of the summer festival, where nothing seems to exist. Any date, in fact, beyond the summer festival is blank. Mm. With this information, Zorian brings the matriarch up to speed with what he knows about the time loop and the invaders. The subject of Zack and collaborating him with him is broached, but the matriarch quickly comes to the same conclusion as Zorian. There's at least one more person likely in the time loop, and they're working with the invading forces in some fashion, for some reason. The matriarch suggests Zorian should try and learn more about his classmates, as it would be kind of awkward if one of them had been the third time traveler, who probably messed with Zack's mummeries this whole time. There's also a list of human diviners, so Zorian could look into the strange future forecasting issue. Zorian walks away from the meeting with a bit of hope, finally having an ally who is aware of what's going on and working with him. But there is a seed of fear in his mind. What if he's making the same mistake that Zack did, and perhaps trusting someone he shouldn't? We skip an inde indeterminable amount of time later to Zorian musing on his dislike of temples. He didn't really get why people revered the gods who had vanished, because all the stories he heard, they kind of sounded like jerks, and who really would want them back? 
Turns out one of the diviners in the matriarch identified is said to work at the Sayorian temple. Gotta get a palpable sense of unease as it seems like every time Zorian is about to enter the temple, his mind kind of wanders to another feature as if he's subconsciously looking for any excuse to not go in. He's kind of looking at the statues, feel like the grim-faced angels are judging him. You know, actually they could be battle golems to defend the temple as well. Oh, but the carvings on the door, oh, those are kind of interesting. They look like they depict the creation story as told by the Ecosians, of course. And you know, the, oh, oh, Zorian is distracted when going through the creation myth as he's interrupted by a man stepping out of the temple. Uh, Zorian introduces himself and asks about Priestess Kyle, as he had a few questions. We'll learn the priest's name is Batak, who invites Zorian in for a bit of hospitality, as Kyle is busy with a ritual she cannot step away from. Trying to make conversation, Zorian comments on how few people there seem to be in the temple today, asking if it's just a slow week. The priest is a bit somber and says it's more like a slow decade due to the weeping. Seems like the function of the church in this setting, having many skilled and knowledgeable healers, was decimated when they failed to stymie the disease that swept through the continent. A bit of a one-two punch, a decimation of the clergy and a loss of prestige as they're perceived to be failing in one of the few skills they're actually supposed to be the best at. Eventually, their hospitality dialogue dance has gone on long enough, and Priest Batak directly asks Zorian, uh, why is he there, asking for Priestess Kyle. Zorian talks about Future Sight being blank after the summer festival, and it's obvious that Batak is actually aware of this. He makes an excuse to go fetch the Priestess, who, hmm, kind of get the feeling that that ritual is kind of a bit of an excuse and they all sit down together to talk. And once the gang is all together, Kyle rebukes Batak, talking about how she knew she wasn't making a mistake in her forecasts. But it seems the priestess is actually concerned for a different reason than Zorian. They agree to exchange information, but warn Zorian they can sense lies. Deciding not to risk it, Zorian blithely throws the invasion force under the bus with a completely straight face. I mean, who needs lies when the blunt truth works quite well for one's concern? As far as the church's issues with the future forecasting though, it seems they actually also cannot contact the angels. Uh, none of them can be summoned, none of them are responding, and they've even heard rumors that demon worshippers can contact their devils. It's almost as if something has cut off the entire material plane from the spiritual realms. Mm. The plot thickens. And it seems the timing of this was about a week ago, around when the time loop started. Ah, okay, we're getting some more information. Don't know what it means yet, but we can file that away. Zorian is rattled by learning this, and he takes a break to process what he now knows. It's like the spell wasn't snatching up souls and putting them in their past bodies, but actually rewinding time itself in a targeted area and some kind of time bubble. But this wouldn't possibly be human magic. A few hundred mages on top of a mana well with a ton of time maybe could affect a small country at most, but the time loop has to at least cover the entire continent, otherwise rumors would start making their way in. Actually, Zori muses, it might make more sense if it's covering the whole planet. This is likely something from the Age of Gods, but if it's due to a higher being's influence, why does it seem like everything's going so awry? Every answer seems to reveal three more questions. Zorian's doom thinking is interrupted by Tyvin sitting down at his table. Turns out she's actually been trying to find any human empaths who could maybe help train Zorian in place of the spooky scary spiders. 
But um, the one person she found wanted him to immediately sign an apprentice contract and dedicate himself to being only a healer. Not really Zorian's cup of tea. Later, Zorian turns his mind to checking into his classmates for secret time travelers. He immediately disregards a couple due to knowing them before the time loop and how their personalities really haven't been acting any different this whole time. There are two people though with less than stellar reputations he decides to focus on. There is first, Tanami Ayo, a house with a shady reputation gained during the Witch Wars. Ayo, Ayo, another historical event. All right, we're filling out the timeline here. It seems the Aope were a clan of witches that were granted nobility by the Ecosians in exchange for defecting. Okay, this is referencing the government as a whole, so we could put this Witch Wars event pre the Shattering. There's a mention of how Aope rose through the ranks of nobility, so they're likely quite old, at least a few generations before the Shattering. But it's said they dabbled in dark magics, necromancy, demon summoning, mind magic, all rumors, <laughs> of course, of course. The other person is an Estin Greer, suspicious primarily because of his origins, the Island of Exiles. He came to Alizia from the Yulukan Ibasa. Most of the people from the Yulukan Ibasa were exiled after the Necromancer's War. Man, where you go? We're, we're getting all sorts of historical events filled out today. Uh, now we got another war. And let's see. Uh, hmm. Yeah, we don't really learn much more other than there was a war of necromancers. Hmm. I suppose it is a bit uh, self-explanatory, you know, shattering all the nations fractured. Witch wars, a bunch of witches. Necromancers war, probably involves necromancy. But also, Zorian suspects the mages leading the invasion are mostly coming from the Yulukan Ibasa. It's notorious for having many necromancers, which would explain the number present in the evasion. And it's also the last known residence of Quitak Ikel, a lich general that fought the old alliance in the necromancers war and seems kind of similar to the lich that Zorian was smacked into Zack with, but I, I'm sure Zorian is jumping to conclusions. Surely his luck wouldn't be that bad. You know, some kind of ancient lich general? Like, what are the odds? Zorian returns to the Aranean matriarch with everything that he's learned. He also asks about their disdain for flicker minds, people who are not psychic. The Aranea consider flicker minds as basically kind of people who are blind, you know, sure they can function, but they're kind of missing a whole other sense to really experience the whole world around them. The Aranea believe everything is connected through the psychic web that suffuses creation. Zorian mentions a human, the human empath that Tyvan brought up, thinking to use it as a bit of leverage to get uh, some training in mind magic more easily from the matriarch. And the matriarch immediately blows up on him, screaming that he should never go to the human empath and uh, they teach everyone wrong. Um, allegedly, all they do is teach people how to close themselves off from the Great Web and disengage their psychic abilities. But Zorian is in luck. She has a teacher ready for him come the next day. Once he truly understands the Great Web, he'll never think about talking to a human empath. We jump a few days and Zorian is meditating. A serene rock upon the chaotic ocean of life, he is at peace. He is reminded of his lessons with Zvim, as the first lesson in being psychic is sensing the minds of nearby Aranea. But he is struggling to take these Aranean baby steps. Bickering with the matriarch, he finally has a bit of a re realization 
by connecting the thought of how divinations, which dump their information directly into the mind of the mage, are easier for psychics to understand. It's a passive skill. He relaxes, he turns his gaze inward, and simply visualizes the minds around him, and his mind opens. He sees the bright spots of all the creatures around him, and immediately gets overloaded and has to stop. He complains to the matriarch about how her instructions had been kind of unhelpful or nonspecific, but she snipes right back that her understanding of what he says is fuzzy as well. Language does matter. She's only understandable to him as a testament to how much she has actually studied and learned humans so as to be able to communicate them. With this first success, we get a bit of a Zvim-like chastisement that, while it's nice he was successful, it was not nearly fast enough. He needs to be able to open his mind on the stock. The month crawls by as he learns the most foundational basics of being a psychic, being able to open his mind, being able to close down his empathic abilities so he doesn't get overwhelmed by crowds anymore. And what better place to practice what he's been learning than Zack's mother of all parties. Zorian decides to invite Tyvin with him to Zax, as he knows the invasion is going to kick off, and it would be kind of nice to have a combat expert nearby. The party is going to be taking place at the Noveta Estate Manor, and Zack greets them at the door. Tyvin, being the blunt person that she is, remarks on the kind of dilapidated and rundown state of the manor. You know, there's no servants. Things are kind of looking unmaintained. Despite the Noveta name and house being quite the prestigious one, Zack fills in the blanks with the Splinter Wars and weeping. We finally get some very specific information about what exactly went on during the Splinter Wars. Apparently, the old alliance hadn't had a major war in centuries. Despite firearms being around for a similar amount of time, they were kind of looked down upon. Mages were a lot more agile and far more destructive. But with the alliance shattering, the smaller constituent states needed some kind of military and fielded non-mages with firearms en masse in the hopes of perhaps surviving just a little bit against the large powers trying to gobble them up. And it was the first time that firearms had been deployed en masse, and it devastated the more mage-dependent countries who didn't even bother with firearms at all. It also turns out that House Noveta was a highly militaristic house and considered military service uh, pretty much mandatory as part of their prestige. So they were decimated. And then the weeping came along and kicked the legs out from the living survivors who were limping along, leaving Zack as the only survivor of House Noveta. And it seems like the weeping wasn't bubonic plague tier devastation, but it still killed about 10% of the population on the continent, which is still quite a lot. Later during the party, Zorin approaches Tinami and tries to learn a bit about his classmate from sleuthing. Apparently, she likes spiders. Oh, oh boy, does she like spiders. Oh, oh no, does this world have spider girls instead of horse girls? Oh geez, she even knows all things about things that are mistaken for spiders, like demons with spider-derived traits. Zorian is deluged with all sorts of spider facts and curses himself for basically opening the can of spiders. After extracting himself from Tinami's web, he runs into Zack. Apparently, the older boy is gathering everyone up to uh, <laughs> watch the fireworks. Although, apparently, unbeknownst to him, if everything goes to plan, the fireworks are going to be a little bit different this loop. The Zorian and the Matriarch have a plan. See, Zorian didn't want to interact with the invaders and had limited himself to pure information gathering so far. But the Aranea, well, they're quite 
well positioned to fry things. And in this case, the fireworks are very normal. No artillery strikes rocking Sioria, and Zack is incredibly baffled. Alas, the invasion is only delayed shortly, as the monsters and their controllers pour out of the dungeon. The people at the party manage a fighting retreat out of the mansion. With this improved mind sensing, Zorian manages to bait one of the tunneling worms into munching an explosive cube instead of eating him this time. Amidst the chaos of the battle, the matriarch manages to get in contact with him and update the memory packet with some key new information she had discovered. Zorian then takes a few steps and eats a jagged red beam. Darkness takes him. And that's where our chapter recaps are going to end for today.